Hi y'all and welcome to my kitchen. You ever find yourself looking for a, a pen and can't find one in the kitchen? If I got a solution for you. We're gonna make, today we're gonna make these uh, stick pens and refrigerator uh, magnet holders. And the best part about it is they're suitable for a novice turner and they only cost about 12 cents a piece. Uh, you're using a big stick pen or you can use a knockoff. I got these 10 for a buck at a, at a dollar store. And this shout out is for Ron Radliff for suggesting this. Okay, for wood for the stick pen, we need a square, uh, about three quarter inch square, eight inches long. For the magnet uh, holder, we're going to need a piece about an inch and a half inch square. You can use domestic wood like the uh, oak and dogwood on the left and the cherry on the right, or you can use an exotic like the zebra wood in the middle. Several ways you can uh, dismantle these pens. I find the easiest way is to take a knife and just slip it in there. Uh, and the ink stick is just about five inches, five inches long, or a few metric guys, about 135, 135 millimeters from uh, this tip to the end. If you want a little short one, you can always cut this off. And the trick is you're going to measure this area right here to see what size uh, uh, drill bit you're going to use. And, and you want it snug. So 530 seconds is a nice snug, snug fit, and that works out well. Yeah, I think one of the hardest things about doing this project is actually drilling the wood for your uh, ink insert. And I'll, I'm quick to say uh, this is not necessarily the best way. It's not the only way. Uh, but it's a way that works for me. But if you've got any suggestions for a better way to do it based on your experience, leave it in the comments below and explain why uh, you feel like your way is better and it'll help us all. First of all, I mount the thing in on the, the uh, in a chuck. I use pin jaws, the two jaw jaws, and that works fairly well if the wood is fairly square. Another alternative is turn it between centers to maybe uh, five eighths and use a collet chuck if you've got one. And then a third approach, if you don't have any of that, another approach without even needing a, a chuck is you can turn the, a tenon on here to fit your Morse taper and tap it in here and not even need a, need a chuck. First thing you're going to do with most any approach for drilling is you're going to start by drilling a starter hole about two inches deep. And we're going to go at a speed of about 500. And you want very straight grain wood. If you've got if you've got uh, grain uh, that, that has a difference between uh, 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 summer and winter growth and the rings come out kind of diagonally, you may have a difficult time getting a center hole because it's going to follow the softest grain. But we're going to uh, drill about a, uh, about a two inch hole and we're going to turn this very slowly and we're going to clear the ships regularly. And we're just going to kind of let the drill find its way. Put the least amount of pressure as possible. Go very slowly and kind of let the drill find its find its way. Clear regularly. Okay, now I've got a starter hole. I'm going to go ahead and take this out, and we're going to use a different approach for using a longer drill bit. A number of people are successful uh, grasping the drill bit in, in vice grips and and centering it. I find that a little difficult for me, a little awkward uh, for this long drill bit, so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and use the, the uh, a Jacobs chuck and I put this drill bit in off the lathe because that way I can be sure it's it's absolutely centered so it won't wallow, wallow around. Now this is a fairly long drill bit. One little shorter would actually probably work better. Turn this on Putting my hand on the drill chuck, I'm just going to go ahead and now it's not a bad idea to uh, mark the the depth that you're going to be drilling by taking taking a little bit of painter's tape. Like I say this is about five inches long, and the tip is going to go right there. That's how deep it needs to be, and there's the end. So there's how deep we're going to be drilling. Probably don't want to go much more than about a half inch at each pass. Before you clear the chips. 
some woods, maybe clear them faster. Retract my tail stock, start over again. And there we go. Okay, I brought up the tail stock support uh, uh, with minimal pressure, and we're going to turn this at a high speed. I'm going to set this thing at about, uh, oh, I'm going to set a little bit tighter. We're going to bring this up to about 3,000. We're going to turn this up to about 3,000. Using a spindle rough and gas, taking very light cuts. Okay, now that I've got it rough close to size, I want to get this thing down to uh, slightly, uh, right at 3 8 I'm using my sizing, 3 8 inch sizing gouge. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is that this is going to fit in here with a little band so it won't fall through. You could make a taper, but we're going to wind up drilling a 5 16 inch hole, so the band is going to be 3 8 of an inch, and then it's going to taper down from there. So I want to mark, uh, I like, I, I, I'd rather have this one a little further up, so we're going to change that a little bit by marking that. I think I'll have the band right about here. And we're going to use the use a skew. I'm going to be very careful and very light pressure and support it with my fingers to take this down to just below 5 16 of an inch. Just support it with your fingers. I'm going to need to change tool rest so I can get in there a little e more easily. So I'll go to uh, one that's a little, a little shorter that I'll have to move more often, but I can get my finger wrapped around it for, for better support. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and set my calipers for 5 16 of an inch so it'll fit in that hole. Okay, I've adjusted my tool rest. I'm going to move back to get a little more of this round back here. Concentrate on doing this little little band here. I'm going to switch to a 3/8 inch spindle gouge to so just kind of taper this bead. sanded pretty good. Uh, I know how long it needs to go. I need to end it right about here. I want to turn a couple of beads on the very end, then uh, finish sanding that, and then I'm going to put a, a sanding sealer coat on it, and I'm going to use a detail spindle gouge just to put a couple of beads. Okay, people use different finishes. I'm not a big fan of CA finish, so I'm not going to use uh, CA. Uh, if you want to use a CA finish, if you know how to do it, uh, great. If you don't, uh, you probably better watch somebody else because I don't do CA finishes. But we're going to use a little of this Mylan's uh, lacquer sander, sanding sealer just to kind of seal these pores a little bit. I like this stuff because it dries so blooming fast, literally within seconds. 
Now I'm going to get a fresh, fresh piece of uh, 600 grit. Just lightly sand it. Okay, I built up a few coats of shellac. I'm going to go ahead and finish the uh, parting this off. And we're going to do that by first, I'm going to bring this speed in just a little bit more here. And now I'm just going to taper this bead out to the point. This is delicate work, but if uh, you feel more comfortable using a little saw, that'll work too. And there we go. I touch that up with just a some 600, and we'll be good. Okay, despite my best efforts, I wallowed that hole out just a little too much, and this is too loose a fit. There's a couple of possibilities. I could put a drop or two of a thick CA in there and uh, let it soak in, and, and that, that might work. But I tell you what I found that works best for me is to go ahead and use some uh, plumber's Teflon tape, which I happen to have on hand down here at the base. And just bring it up right to that edge and we put that in and we've got a nice snug fit okay now it's time to turn the refrigerator magnet holder uh, basically we're going to take a inch and a uh, inch and a half block and drill a few holes in it on the face grain or rather the in, in grain uh, I'm going to drill uh, a hole two holes for the magnets I'm using 5 16 inch magnets they're not very strong uh, so I need to drill two holes. There's a couple of ways, and then on the, the side grain, we're going to drill a 3 8 inch uh, hole. There's a couple of ways to mount these on the lathe. Let me just mention them. One of them is you can actually use uh, double-sided turner's tape, and that works very well. You take a spindle scrap. You can either turn a little 5 16 inch uh, tenon that will uh, anchor, uh, anchor that... Uh, that block on here and then clamp it, clamp it for a little while so it gets a good hold. But you know when I was rummaging around looking for some wood for this I ran across this and guess what? This looks remarkably similar and this is a knob I've done before and when I do my knobs I, I use a screw chuck so that's what I'm going to use for this and, and I've already got this made uh, so it'll give me room to get around on the edge uh, to do the you know the final bottom shape. So uh, I drill two uh, 5 16 inch holes and in the center one I'm going to go ahead and drill a 9 64 hole for my screw chuck and then on the side grain I'm going to drill a 3 8 inch through hole. Uh, I found that, it, that you tend to get some blowout so it pays to, to drill these holes on the blank and then, and then turn them and, and sand them. Don't try to drill them afterwards. You, you mar the wood holding it and you tend to get some blowout. Okay, so we're going to mount our block on, on the screw chuck. Uh, I'm going to put it on there with a, using a screwdriver. Make sure it's nice and tight. Then go ahead and mount it on the chuck. And then we're going to bring up Up soft touch so we don't scar the front. We'll do some decorating on the front when we when we finish. Okay, here's our through hole. We're going to uh, mark uh, on our through hole. We're going to cut a cove. So the first thing we're going to do is round it off. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to show you the boo boo. I drill these holes <laughs> for the magnets on the wrong side, so we're going to have to cut that away. But uh, not a problem since we're going to do a cove, cove there. All right, so bring up the bring up the tailstock, bring up the tool rest, turn it, make sure it clears. 
And I'm going to use a small 3 8 inch uh, bowl gouge at a pretty good speed. Uh, maybe 1500 or 1600. And then we're just going to use this almost like a spindle gouge. And we could use a spindle roughing gouge. But I'm going to use a bowl gouge for most everything. Let's lock that so it doesn't come loose. see. We're going to start our cove there and end our cove there. And I'm going to switch to a spindle gouge for this. Get a little bit closer. And we're just going to make a cove. Come in here with, the, with here's the bevel coming in almost 90 degrees and just scoop like it's coffee. Like it was a coffee. Ice cream. Come in on the other side. Because the grain is running this way. So we've got to go from high to low because basically it's a little spindle. Okay, I got this uh, sanded up to 600 grit. Uh, now we're going to put just a little bit of a rose rosette in the middle uh, with my favorite texturing tool, this little micro tool. I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400. I put a drop of oil on here. We're going to just come in here at a slight angle. And I'm going to roll it up. So we, now we're going to use a point tool and just make that pop a little bit. Get the speed up. Come in just on the inside. Whoa. We're going to make a bead here. Drop the tool, roll it over. Lock the tool, roll it over. Okay, now we need to mix a little little five minute epoxy for the magnet. I find the uh, CA does not work, uh, not strong enough for these things, it doesn't seem like. Um, I use two magnets. I get these magnets uh, off uh, eBay, uh, 20 of them, uh, for a couple bucks, they're about 10 cents a piece. They, they're not, they're rare earth. Uh, they're 5 16 If I had a 3 8 I'd probably only need one, but I had to drill two holes. So we mix this up. I'm using 5-minute epoxy. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe so it doesn't cost you anything. And that way you'll get notified. Uh, I won't miss anything when I release some new uh, great wood turning tutorials. Y'all stay safe and y'all come back here. Some folks just find it easier to uh, smash the pin to get to get the center out. Of course, you got to be careful not to crush the uh, tip. Maybe you ought to smash the other end. Like that, gently smash it.